bespoke polygon charts, a coxcomb chart, and this is what it looks like. Before we get started creating this, let's try to understand some of the anatomy of this chart. In our case, we have 12 different slices. Each slice is split into three different segments. Each slice represents a month of the year. So by looking at this, you can see the first slice is January. The overall slice gets smaller in February. If you look at November and December, they are much bigger in terms of slices. So the key is that we are going to build this using everything that we've learned today, all the practice that we've had. We are going to use data densification. We are going to use trigonometry. We are going to use a vast number of table calculations. However, once you build this, you'll see it's not as tough as it looks. This is also known as the Florence Nightingale Rolls. So again, Hope you enjoy this and let's get started by opening Tableau. So as always, we are going to start by loading our sample Superstore data source into Tableau. So let's click on Microsoft Excel, locate our Superstore file, double click to bring this into Tableau. Once loaded, we are going to bring the orders into the query panel. We're not going to worksheet yet. What we're going to do is add some data densification to our data set. So let's double click on the logical table. Open this up. What I want us to do is go into our Excel spreadsheet program or Notepad editor. Type in path 1 and 202. By using this, we should get 200 points in total. Let's copy this information. Let's go back to Tableau and let's paste this in. The key thing is that around the circumference of a circle, we are going to have 100 points on the inside and 100 points on the outside. Very similar to the last tutorial when we built half circle gauge charts. So with our model loaded, let's go to create drawing calculation, type in 1, let's click OK. Let's go into our second drawing calculation, type in 1, and again we are creating a Cartesian join here. Which means that for every row in a model, we have two rows. We will have that multiplied by every row in our orders data source. Do be careful when doing Cartesian joins. Now, because we're doing data densification, let's right click on path and immediately create our bin object by going to create bins and giving this the value of one. Let's click OK. Let's create our index. So that's a calculated field called index with the formula of index minus one. Let's click OK as well. Now because we have 12 months of the year, what I want to do is extract a date part. So let's see if we can do that. What I want right now is TC date part. Why is it a table calculation? Because I want the date part to be available everywhere. But first, let's create the calculation, which is date part. We are going to extract the month from the order date. Nice and simple. However, because we want this to be available, let's put this in a Windows Max. And lastly, I want us to start at 0 as opposed to 1. So the part will take will give you the values 1, 2, 3, 4, the numeric version of the month. What I'm doing here is 1, I'm extracting the number from the order date, making this available and subtracting 1 from it. So it starts from 0. Let's click OK. Now let's create our data. 
of TC segment cells. So we're going to create calculations on top of our data now. Let's type window sum, sum of cells, and this must be second nature now. And we have to divide this by two because we have created data densification and we've multiplied our data records by two. So we will divide by two to get the exact number. Let's click OK. I want us to create the following because we're stacking shapes on top of each other. We want a nice and easy way to get a starting point or the end of the previous position. So we are going to create a table calculation, DC, previous segment cells. And what we're going to do is just a running sum of segment cells minus segment cells. What does that mean? It means for the first segment, it will be running sum, which is just a segment, minus the segment cells, so that will give you zero. However, moving on for the next item, it would then basically give you the segment cells in itself. So it's a quite a nice trick. You could also use previous if you want to. But I find that this works a lot better for a lot of the stuff that I do. So let's click OK. We are going to create a step size. Again, this is the circumference value. And we are going to type 3.6 divided by 12. The key is that we have 100 points per segment size per slice there will be 100 points going around but what we want to do to make sure it fits is multiply that by 3.6 to make it 360 and then divide by 12 so we know exactly how far the dots are away from each other along the circumference so this will give us our TC step size we're almost there we're going to create our calculated fields put it together and then we're going to walk through this Lastly, we want our TC starting point. This would be our TC date part. So is this the first month, second month, third month? Multiplied by the step sizes. How far each of the points away from each other? And as we have 100 points for our individual slice, we will have multiplied by 100. But this tells us where we start around the circle. Let's click OK. So that, those are the main calculations, but now we are going to bring it all together to create what I consider as quite a monster calculation, but we'll walk through this step by step. Let's create calculated field. This is going to be a monster X, but we will walk through it. If index, is less than or equal to 100 then so this is the inner we are going to write sine radians and then we are going to put inside index multiplied by the step size so we want the index to go from 1 to 100 and we want to multiply it by the step size and we also want to start at the starting point, obviously. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm just going to copy this for now. But this is our basis. Our index goes around the circle. We want the step size to say how far away from each, other, each of the dots will be from each other. And then we have our starting point as in when does each segment start. And on top of that, we are going to multiply by previous segment cells. So this is the point, which is, this is the side of the slice, which is closest to the center. Now, further away from the center, we are going to have 201 minus index so we're going to reverse the trend 
as we've done before with our half circle. This is why we did the half circle first. And at the end, you're going to multiply by DUT segment cells, or what's the current segment cells, plus what has previously come before it. So again, if you break this down, each of the calculations, it does make sense, it's not as complicated as you think it would be. Let's click OK. So that gives us our X. Let's right click and duplicate. Let's edit this and rename this as our Y. But this time we just need to replace the sign with cosine. Again, if we read it through, index is every point across around the circumference. Step size, how far each of those dots or points are away from each other. Starting point, which essentially tells us where we start each individual slice. And the segment cells, where exactly are they? So let's click OK. Now let's build out our data visualization. We definitely want segment on color, so that's nice and easy. We want month. Let's take order date. Let's drop that onto details. And let's select month. You see all the months are there. What I now want to do is take X and drop it onto columns. I want to take Y and drop that onto rows. Now I want our path bin to drop that onto rows. You right click, ensure that show missing values is selected. Now I want to change the mark type to polygon. I want to take path bin and drop it onto the path mark. I now want to edit my table calculation configuration. So let's right click on X, go to compute using, select path bin. Nothing yet. Let's do the same with Y. Right click, compute using, path bin. And now we have this very interesting shape. The one thing that I would always say is when you are experimenting with new data visualizations, it's always really cool when you get stuff like this. It's what I call Tableau Art. In any case, this is here because we need to edit our table calculations again. But let's give it a try. Right click on X. Let's go to Edit Table Calculations. Let's get into the details. What do I want now? is previous segment cells. Let's make sure that segment is selected. Let's do the same with Y. Right click, edit table calculations for the previous segment cells. Let's have segments. And as you can see, we have our shape. Now let's, let's do a little bit of formatting. Let's hide the headers. Let's add a border. Let's remove the grid lines and the zero lines. And lastly, let's rename our sheet as Foxcom. Now, let's understand our calculation a little bit. So, to draw the shape, we have our index. This is going to be 100 points. It gives us a smooth, beautiful shape. How far those points are away from each other is defined by the TC step size. You have the segment cells, which is individual chunks here. This is your segment cell. We have the previous segment cells, which allows us to determine how high to stack each of these bars on top of each other, because they are individual pieces now. On top of that, you have the starting point. So initially, you start at zero. 
then you start the next piece and so forth. So that's what we calculate with the TC starting point. And again, all of this has come together to give us a very nice looking Foxconn chart. Now, for fun, let's take order date. Let's drop that onto filters. Let's select year 2020. Click apply. And now, if we show filter, we should be able to enjoy the fruits of our labor. So let's change the year. And here we have it. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you need to, please revisit it again. Otherwise, see you in the next lesson.